Hey guys, Paul McClain here, and I'm with my my great buddy Juan Archuleta. Juan, how you doing, brother? Good, dude. How you doing? Good, good, good man. Yeah, all right. Good to see you, dude. Hey, dude. Good to have you in here, man. No, it's great to be in here. Well, dude, I'm excited, bro. Yeah. You know, I, in fact, I haven't stopped smiling until we, we had a conversation <laughs> yesterday about this. Yeah. And um, and the thing is this, man. Like we've known each other for a long time. Yeah. I mean, going back to like seventh grade, we were both yeah. like four foot seven. Yeah, right. <laughs> Seventy two pounds, With a six foot heart, yeah. <laughs> and, and we both grew about the same yeah. height, man, which yeah. worked out well. Um, so the thing is this, man. Like we got out of high school, you yeah. you started going down this this fighting, you know, career. Mm -hmm. You've accomplished, man, some massive feats with yeah, with you. MMA. Yeah. I mean, this belt right here, dude, yeah. says a lot. Like yeah. that ain't that ain't like one of those leagues where you're like, I got a belt. It's like, dude, what league is that again? Yeah, yeah you Google it. Like, <laughs> is that like is that a league? Is that like a backyard of somebody's house? Did they make that belt? Did they buy it off of the Walmart? Like this is this is a Bellator belt, dude. Yeah, like, Bellator. And uh, and every every league you've gone into, man, I've I've seen the progression. Man, right. I've been there in your corner, man, watching you. You know, whether it was fighting at different leagues, all the way up to really the, the one of the biggest leagues in the entire world. Yeah. Um, and so I've seen that success. Yeah. And um, and while you were doing that, you know, I was out there building the insurance industry, doing the same, winning yeah. world titles, B just, building your name hey, up, getting yeah. after, man, trying to trying to not screw up brick. with all these kids, man, yeah. that I got. But um, <laughs> but we talked about this, and, and and I thought about like that path being a fighter, man, mm -hmm. like like how. It, you know, strenuous it is to mm -hmm. go out there and, and get to a level where you can make money yeah. and, and get paid. Yeah. And then how many people go out there and you're competing against the entire world, man? Right. Like how many people go out and um, actually get to a place where they, they make money? Yeah. And it's not that not that easy, right? Far and few in between, right? Even like the label UFC, you think, oh, these guys have to be making money, bro. They're making like 10 grand a fight. And that fight took like three months to get. And, and do you think about how many, how the, the 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 pool of those fighters when you look at the entire ocean yeah. of people trying to get to that smaller yeah. pool, and so w when I thought about that, it's like man, the, the insurance industry, for one's the most lucrative industry in the world. In fact, th there's the the financial services industry creates more seven figure income earners than any industry ever. Nice. Not even no, no, nobody comes close. And um, and so when we talk about, I was like, dude. You you looking at you know getting your license? How many mm -hmm. people you could help yeah. that are in that path, that process, mm -hmm. are trying to work a job to make money while they're going to pursue their dreams? Which right. is, dude, super admirable. Yeah. You've you've accomplished yeah. that, Thank and you. then even the people that you know the door's kind of closing, right? Like yeah. they've gotten to this point where it's like, dude, I don't know, it just ain't working out. Yeah, they took the wrong road, right? Like <laughs> they they stop being self disciplined. You know, it goes a lot to what you have shown in yourself. You know, like I got to put in this work like sorry i can't hang out this weekend one i gotta go i already got some appointments i had booked i got i got to meet these guys i got to sell these policies and things like that and, then it, and we were both on the up and come sometimes you hit me up i'm like sorry man i'm in camp i can't come over I, i'm in i'm on a strict diet i can't barbecue and oh, come yeah, yeah. i watch you pack your own you. stuff that you yeah. bring over but dude the reality <laughs> is this yeah. so you, you you have to have a certain skill set yeah to go out there like you can't just be the guy that does all you got to have a mixture of both yeah like dude there's some people that are disciplined like crazy yeah. give it everything and they'll never make it just because they don't have necessarily what it is right, right. yeah um like it takes a blend of both with with uh the insurance so man like as long as you're willing to, to if you care enough about people right. and you're, you're reaching out to people that have asked for help they right. sent in a lead which is what we work yeah um it's difficult if you put the work in I almost say it seems like almost a possibility not to right. eventually see the success. And so we were talking about how many people we believe would be really good served and have an opportunity to go out there and, and help their family and to make a difference and to, and to really change their life. Yeah. And you still know. follow their passion, right? Which would be martial arts. And like, that's the biggest thing growing up through the uh, MMA world is like, bro, I had three jobs and was training and like still barely scraping by. Like, luckily my rent was $500 a month. Luckily I've only, I only had one kid at the time. I was providing for me, my wife and uh, my, my son Ezra. And then we had the next kid on the way. Then I was like, man, I better step up. Like <laughs> I got to find out what, what else is out there, you know? And so these hard disciplines of growing through this and not biting down. And, and like hindsight, what I wish I would have done was join in with you, right? Like I should have got my insurance license. I should have been like, okay, I could drive from place to place. I could make appointments where I'm training and then 
hit these appointments and then go train, right? Like th- this is all in hindsight, what I wish I would have done to make things easier. And, and, but honestly you, you see the eye on the prize and you're trying to be, yeah, you had the blinders on. Yeah. You had the blinders on like a horse, right? In a horse race. They're not worried about what's going on. They're worried about getting that. Well, dude, in, in fairness, bro, <laughs> like it wasn't like it is now back yeah. when you were looking at it then, you know, yeah. like there's been a lot of like, adaptation adjustments mm-hmm. you know when we launched family first life you know we'd already been in the business for so long yeah and um and it was like dude what can we do different to, to really attack the insurance industry as lucrative as it is but yeah. put the agents first and so we did that by compensation up to 145 no yeah. fees no contract and they're really having leads where people can reach out and call them right. it's almost like now you know if it was if we go back in time and, and it was <laughs> ffl now yeah i think you would you would maybe would have said hey i'm going to do this while going to fight yeah because sure, you would have had a stack of leads like think yeah. about this what what difference would it have made for you to have a stack of leads that maybe one day a week you came in, mm-hmm. you called these families, mm-hmm. they, they asked for help, whether mm-hmm. it was online, through social media, they said, you know what, if I die, I want to make sure my family's protected. Oh, yeah. They fill it out, date of birth, they send mm-hmm. it in, you give them a call, yeah. you book an appointment to go see them. Nowadays, man, we have such a, a, a platform for even virtual sales. Yeah. We have an agent named Elizabeth that's uh, 20 years old, yeah, she and she went out there and helped 20 families geez. last month over the phone. She, she does it from her house because yeah. she's raising her baby. And um, and if you help, you know, one family on average is about a thousand bucks a year they pay for life insurance. Yeah. The average commission with FFL, you know, the starting is a hundred percent. It goes up to 145. Yeah. So the client's paying a thousand bucks a year. Yeah. And, and and you're getting paid 100% of the 1000 yeah. bucks. It's $1,000 that you're going to make on that policy, yeah. right? Yeah. And so if she helped 20 families, 20 times 1,000, yeah. I mean, do the math, right? Yeah. And, and it's absolutely changed her life, yeah. right? Um, but we, if you could go in and call these leads, mm-hmm. go out there, and you help three families the next day, yeah, and and you know the average family you help you brings in a thousand bucks, they're paying a thousand bucks a year. Yeah, it's three thousand dollars for that day. Yeah, what, what would that have done for you, man? I mean, that would have definitely relieved a lot more stress and had more time to heal my body and try to get through these practices that I was going through. You know, uh, at that time I just had to bite the bullet and then worry about where I was going to get this paycheck from. You know, hopefully picking up guys I could do private lessons with. Hopefully I could do you know sell a few more extra tickets to some friends and family to make a couple extra bucks, you know, where this would have just been, I wouldn't have had to care about selling tickets. I wouldn't have had to worry about stressing out like every day about where my food was going to come from my family, how I was going to pay rent, how I was going to be able to keep on, you know, the AC throughout the, throughout the month of uh, summer times like now, <laughs> right? Like, geez, dude. So it would have definitely been, been a life changing experience for me a hundred percent. Yeah, because you just don't know what you don't know until it, it finally gets there sometimes, mm-hmm. you know. And, like, you look at the organization, the company, like, a lot of the, the people that we went to high school with, man, yeah. like like Andrew Taylor yeah. is out there, and he's multiple seven-figure income earner now. Right. You know, you got Rochelle that we went to high school with, yeah. and she's a single mom with three kids, and, and she's out there helping two, three hundred families um, a year, and what that's bringing in, yeah. and she's got... An organization and um yeah and seeing them ben succeed smith, is awesome yeah, you know thing. yeah ben smith is out there crushing it and for me sitting back watching this happen and just like knowing i was leaving money on the table now it irks me right because it's like i'm at a point in my career where it's like left turn i could take and and continue down this path of like barely still scraping even as a champion right i'm still barely scraping by or i could go down the middle of the road where it's just like, okay, let me put my fingers in this and see where, what money I left on the table when I wish I could have just implemented a, my off, my off time that I was there recovering in between practices, just making a few phone calls, taking the extra effort of earning for my family, earning for myself and feeling good about it too, because yeah. not only am I helping myself, I'm also helping families. Like I just had an aunt pass away just this week. And it was just like, man, like she didn't have no life insurance. Like now we're going to be, you know, paying to get her buried and all the, all these uh, finances that come behind it. And it's just like, it irks, it irks me because my uncle who passed away, you know, I, uh, of course, uh, with COVID, a lot of deaths have been happening around the world, not just for me. Right. It's like he had life insurance. And so everything was already taken care of, you know, and it's like, that was a breath of fresh air. So to you see. saw both sides. Of yeah. It. You see both sides of it. And you're like, man, like, how are we going to pay through all this? And like, luckily for me, we have money put away where we could help out and help the family out. Whereas like, man, if, if we would have just implemented this and had this safety net behind us like we wouldn't have to care like yeah death happens we all know that there's death taxes is guaranteed in life right so like 
why not secure your family? Why not help people be able to secure their family? You know, maybe this policy is not for this person. So let's just drop it down and kind of meet the expectations that they're looking for. Right. Because that's that's mainly what it's about. It's like, look, at, yeah, we would like to sell a, a, a big policy. But at this end of the day, like do something that's going to help something uh, someone, you know, if they have to cancel, like, why was you? Why we why did you have to cancel? OK, let's work this. These are all things that we face as MMA fighters too. fight got canceled. Now I'm not getting paid. Like, damn, what am I going to do? Like, what did what did I do? When when fights got canceled, like I had to suffer and I had to go work extra overtime. So I had to feast go, or famine yeah, based off that? Yeah, 100%. Well, do you think about, um, like I, I, I've watched your social media pages and, um, dude, they're very inspirational. You know, when you watch your work ethic, your dedication, like, dude, that's inspiring. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I like getting around people that are getting after something, man, mm -hmm. that are hungry, that are humble. They know like, man, I'm just going to give it all I've got. Let yeah. God do it. You know, and, yeah. and you, you, you exemplify a lot of that on your pages. Um, and I just know that there's probably a lot of people that are following you that are inspired They're like, man, I want to go out there and do more, be more. Um, yeah. I believe like I've got more in me. I yeah. want to have a better lifestyle. I like right. to be able to have more freedom on my schedule. Yeah. I like to be able to more, make more money for my family, give yeah. back more, do more for maybe my mom, parents. <laughs> Like they think those things, but the problem is w when a lot of times you're looking at those and you're inspired, uh, the question is, well, well wh where do I put that inspiration into? Like, what mm -hmm. do I do? And, and, I, and I believe without a doubt, man, and I, and I maybe I'm biased, but I've done this yeah. now, you know, for over a decade. Mm -hmm. And we have hundreds of hundreds of, of agents last month that went out and helped over 20 families Gosh, in a awesome. month. Like we said, what that looks like as far as income goes. And so I've seen all the different stories right. and, and the backgrounds and the agents that, you know, they, they came from nothing. Right. I mean, dude, I was pumping septic tanks, right? <laughs> yeah. Andrew is bagging groceries and now he runs, you know, he's multiple, I'm multiple seven sure. figure income. And there's so many different people yeah. that this vehicle, maybe this is what it is. So maybe mm. you can, if you're like, I want it, what, what is there? I want to, I want more, but I don't know how to go out there and get more. Yeah. Well, this is the how yeah. if you got the desire yeah. and you're like, I mean, I love what, you know, you're like, if you're like, I like following one, I like yeah. watching it, it brings out the desire. But how do I go out there and execute and see fruits from it? Yeah. The life insurance industry yeah. can definitely produce that because these clients are sitting in a form. Yeah. They're asking for help. Yeah. So if you say, well, well, Paul, man, I don't want to, I heard about this life insurance thing. Yeah. Yeah, call your cousins, mm -hmm. aunts, uncles, sisters, sisters, ex-boyfriends, right. sisters, ex-boyfriends, <laughs> right. cousins, ex-girlfriends. Like, nah, dude. Like, we got yeah. leads, right? Yeah. And so yeah. I talked to this one person. Yeah. He's like, well, dude, I don't know about the social insurance. I said, yeah. well, you licensed before? And he's like, yeah, and he named a company. I was like, well, yeah. dude, you can't. It's like it's like going to fight for one one program, and you think like this this one program is the way every you know right. Well, perfect works, example, right? Like know? I fought for my fourth world title, and I was like, hell yeah, I'm finally making like I'm about to make history tonight. And then getting a check that says one dollar that I have to sign before my fight when I'm about to make history, it's like, <laughs> bro, what? What is this? Wait, you what know, do you mean it was one dollar. It was legitimately a one dollar check that I still have saved up. Wait, to why? Show people. Wait, wait. Well, what happened was like right, like you do a deal with someone, and it and it goes to more. This is why I like this parallel because it's it's similar to another insurance company that you're you're saying you're talking about right like come on Paul I have to call my 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 best friend's sister's girlfriend's ex boyfriend like yeah, what the hell you man want life insurance? yeah they're like hey them. you want life insurance you're bugging them right well same thing with this like I made a deal with the guy that said okay look at, at once you sell your amount of tickets that covers your cost as far as getting paid mm -hmm. um, for your check um, for for your fight fee and then your opponent's fight fee you could have a hundred percent ticket sales after that so i was like all right cool so i would get sponsors to cover up that tickets uh my my per my fight purse and my opponent's fight purse and then i have all these tickets just to give away you know and it was like something i was helping build my brand well i had the vip tickets as well that went with that and then he tells me well it was except the vip t tables i was like bro you already gave them to me and it's fight night like what am i gonna do tell these people to get out That's like crazy. he's like sorry bro like i have to take your your money from your purse and pay off for the vip tickets tables to my matchmakers so it was like the decision of saying okay do i walk away from the sport and just right. like not make history anymore or do i just go in there bite the bullet and go perform for my fans because everyone was already there you know and i'm signing off for my contract and it's like similar wow. parallel yeah, and no. why i said that is to the insurance company 100%. right yeah, you do. I, like I mean, fees, yeah, fines, exactly, exactly, like, exactly, bro, exactly. you're not keeping up with and, and your that, sales. That's definitely not the way the Bellator, these other organizations have treated you, right? No, I, no, 100 no, yeah. no, yeah. So, so yeah, exactly, man. So if you if you've got like your license or you've been in the business before, like mm -hmm. you don't want to let one 
uh, experience kind of give you the filter of how you look at everything else related right. to this because the reality is the way we set it up in structure there's no fees right so it's not like the, you know hey join us and you're going to pay x amount like there's no fees you're yeah. completely independent we actually sponsor if it's a good fit and pay for somebody's yeah. pre-licensing yeah so they can come in they don't have to pay for their pre-licensing course they get their license they get leads they go out there and make sales help families and and if somebody's saying well man i don't know if i'm a salesperson Dude, like this is one of those things where you're serving. It's not really selling. Yeah. Because they're asking for help. It's yeah. not like you're peddling carpet. You're right. Like these people, when when they pass away, and, and it's hard to get until you've experienced it. Right. Probably like anything. You're like, man, yeah. ain't that big of a deal to get kicked in the face until you get kicked yeah, in the face. Yeah, right. right and punched in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, like, man. Deal, I don't yeah. know. And then you get hit in the mouth. <laughs> like, dude, I did not expect it yeah. to be like that. You get wide-eyed. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, you know, when it comes to this business, man, like, you, you get going and you go out there and help these families. And when somebody passes and you deliver mm -hmm. that death claim, you realize that, dude, I, I'm, not, I'm not selling anything, man. Right. I could go out there with complete passion, enthusiasm. I, right. can, I can challenge people because it ain't about selling. And when you leave right. that client's house and when that day comes, when they don't come home and you deliver that check, they can't bring back the person that maybe was driving down the road and some 16-year-old was texting yeah. and driving and boom, hit, in, hit him. And then that knock on the door happens that night where the, the cop says, hey, is this your husband? And all those emotions yeah. start taking place in that yeah. family and you can't bring it back. Right. But when you can say, here's this check and maybe yeah. it pays off their house. Yeah. Maybe it, 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 it puts food on the table. All those things. Well, they're not worrying how to bury their father, right? Or bury the daughter's, exactly. you know, brother, sister, whatever it may be, right? It's like, man, like that's what we had to deal with just recently, especially my cousin. She was like worried about how she was going to bury her mom, how because she lost her mom and her dad the same the same pretty much month you know and it's just like she didn't get time to reminisce because she was wondering how she she just buried her dad now how is she going to bury her mom you know but luckily for family you know she, we're there for her where if we would have been able to secure something a policy for her where you know now she could grieve for her mom. Now she, sure. she could grieve for her dad. And that's that's really important for your soul, right? Like when someone passes away, uh, just because we've all been going through it lately, it's just like, and you don't have time to grieve for them. Instead, you're worried about the bills that are going to add up and the things you have to do. Like how scary is that? You mm -hmm. know, like, man, it's a, it wrenches my heart and gives me goosebumps right now thinking about it. You know, it's just like, well, how are these families going to take care of their loved one and, and still grieve for them and give them the mourning period if they can't afford it you know? dude 100 percent, man well i think that you know when we had that conversation and uh your heart was really like dude you you know what the struggle is mm -hmm. for a fighter mm -hmm. and what it looks like and really for any kind of athlete man right. um not even just mma but any kind of athlete to go out there and make it to a point where you can provide for your family is a very very you know long gla tall glass of water bro that, that's yeah. it's it's difficult and for somebody to be able to go out there and, and make good money, have their own schedule still intact, mm -hmm. or for somebody where that door is closing and they're like, what do I do now? Yeah. I had a podcast uh, earlier this week with Brent Abernathy. He played for the Minnesota Twins and made yeah. good money. He was yeah. playing Major League Baseball. Yeah. And uh, when he injured his knee and that door closed, he's like, dude, I was depressed. <sighs> yeah. I, I had to re I didn't. I don't know who I was. Like, I had to right. reinvent myself. And now he's an integrity partner, yeah. you know, and, and FFL – uh, you know, we've got over, I think, dozens of integrity partners. I signed a couple years back yeah. with integrity and um, he's, you know, got multiple, multiple seven figures. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, he's reinvented himself. Yeah. You know, he went yeah. out there and put that passion in playing big, big league baseball yeah. into this business. Yeah. And, and what he said, Juan, he said, man, like he's always enjoyed the, the he's like, I didn't just enjoy hitting the ball. He's right. like, I enjoyed the team sport. Like yeah. I enjoyed you know, having, you know, being a contributor to the team. Yeah, I enjoy the, comp the competition. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. The competition is big time for especially high level athletes, right? Like that's what we strive for. Like I'm not really addicted to fighting and things like that. I'm, I'm, I'm more addicted to the competition. I'm not addicted to the fans and things like that. Like, yeah, that's fun when you get a nice knockout and the, you hear the stadium erupt, you know, but it's really the competition. So when you look at this business, man, um, and this goes back to like, I mean, you could look at a book like How I Raise Myself from Failure to Success and something like a lot of the biggest people in the insurance industry, life insurance, um, mm -hmm. they, they were some kind of athletic background. Yeah. Some of our biggest organizations mm -hmm. is, is the same way. Mm -hmm. And I do believe it's because of that athletic mindset where you're like, I'm going to go in 100%, give it all I've got, right. make tweaks, adjustments, get better, 
and um, we've got we've got a camp for you here, bro. Yeah. So like yeah. our camp <laughs> is like it's called right. a boot camp. Yeah, for and, sure. And we get you in, and we teach you exactly what to do and how to do it. Yeah. And man, I suck at a lot of things, but for ten years <laughs> I went out there and was a top ten producer, yeah. helping over four hundred families every single year. And and we've got a lot of people that have done the same mm -hmm. that say this is how you do it. This is how mm -hmm. you call a lead. Mm -hmm. This is how you book an appointment. Yeah. This is how you seal the family. Right. This is how you choose the products. And uh, and we got a camp, man. We got a team. We've got a community. Yeah. We got a Facebook. Uh, you know, group where everybody comes on and they help each other. We got Slack. We got all these platforms. Right. So if you're like, I don't know what the heck if I could do this. Yeah. Oh, you can. If yeah. you're going to put the work in, yeah. if you're hungry, right? And if you got a good attitude, you're positive, right? right? If you if you go out there and you ask good questions, all the help is there. Right. There's no reason why you can't go out there and see massive success. Yeah, agreed. And I think it's like with athletes, uh, they're able to set small goals, right? Like, okay, today, what am I trying to accomplish for today? And then I, and I try to meet those standards, right? And then my ultimate goal is winning the fight. And then uh, the next, say I'm winning a fight and winning multiple fights. Okay, my next, my next major goal is to win the world title. Title. Okay, how do I get there? You know, same thing with people that are selling anything, you know, and it's the reason why it's so competitive and why an athletes mindset takes them above and beyond each um, salesman spot or even like corporate corporate spot is because they're able to set these small goals. Like, did I meet my small goal for the week? How many, how many numbers did I put down that I was going to call? Did I reach that number today? Okay. I put down that I was going to call 20 people. Did you meet those numbers? Okay. How many appointments did I get set up? Okay. You know, these small goals are going to help you in any business, you know, and any, anything you do in life. Like for me, my small goals is to wake up every day and get a run in and get my low base and then start the day off and it's very similar on the way i'm starting to think on how i'm gonna uh bring this mind state into uh insurance selling insurance and life insurance for people is like okay the, these people already want it like these people already want to watch me fight right so okay now how do i get there and how do i make this happen i set small goals i get up early i set my my standard for myself for the day and i go in and attack it and i'm sometimes i might not be successful but guess what I, <laughs> whether you win a championship or you lose a championship guess what happens the next day you got to wake up and start all over again and that's the thing with this is for an athlete mind state or a successful mind state, when you're not competing or you lose a championship, which is making a sale, okay, guess what? Let's go home, regather our focus, let's take a nap, let's go to sleep, and let's see what I could do better the next day because next day is my world title that I'm, I'm going after, you know? So that's, that's the way oh, I see myself implementing what I've used in my life to be successful in this business. Well, I think, man, the, the, Habits and the characteristics that you have to develop um, to survive fighting or any kind of athletics, it translates so well to this business, yeah. man. It, there's so many, you know, things that you can connect and tie it to, right. which is when you can, t you know, tie what you've experienced to what you're going to, it's so much easier to go out there and actually capitalize and see the success. If you can say, man, I, this is how I handled my rejection or when I lost. Right. This is how I, this is how I bounced back. This is how I, I, I got my mind right. You know, right. This is, all these different things. It, it plays. This is how I, I ask questions, man. If I didn't know what to do, I ask questions. Or if something didn't go the right way, man, I watched the film and I was like, okay, I got to tweak this, adjust this. And the same thing, man. You know, in this business, the, the difference is it's very predictable. Right. You know, you can come in and uh, and on a Monday have families to call, mm -hmm. call them up, book appointments, go see them, and you can really predict the income you're going to make and you can work the schedule you're going to work, you know? Yeah, definitely. And the best thing about it too is the camaraderie that's here that you've built for yourself. I mean, we literally have the Michael Jordan of, you know, our, our career that we're choosing to go down, which is you to coach us through this, you know, putting people ahead of you that have done this process, that have failed, that have failed forward, have continued to have success, that continue to be told no, but still won't take no for an answer, that still go out there and still make these things happen, right? Like we're learning off you and for you not to ask for the help if you are struggling as a, a broker, it's just like, hey, come ask questions. Come spend a day with me. Come come here and see how these people are working. See the energy, you know, that these people are producing out, outward, you know. Uh, we just talked about the 19-year-old that's downstairs, right? Like, dude, I seen him and I could tell he's just ready. He He's like, he's fine-tuned. He's, he's ready. To, he was down there just getting after it, you know. And, and not he didn't bat one eye knowing that a world champion just walked into the room because he's already laser-focused on what he wants to do and what he's accomplished last month 
month and what this month's going to bring for him, right? So, yeah. and that's that's due credit to the people that's in front of him, the people leading the way, which is yourself and the other people that are here helping him out and making sure he succeeds. Because if you don't have that team bonding or that team environment that's here, want not only see yourself succeed, but you're also wanting to see him succeed. Like, bro, I it was a different passion in his eye, you know, mm-hmm. especially the struggle that he's been in his life. It's like I would have never known it unless he's told me, you know, it's just like, hey, this is what I went through. You're like, oh, wow, dang. And you're here and you're doing this much of uh, a month. Like, good for you, man. Like, keep killing it. High five. Like, yeah. 19 years old, crushing it. Like, and was was set for failure. But why is that? Look at the place he's surrounded himself. Look at the environment he's in. You walk around this place and you're just like, oh, this this is breeding champions. And congrats on that, man, because I'm, I'm pumped to be part of it. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I'm pumped that you're part of it, bro. And, um, and, and that's what it's about is watching new success stories, dude. That's what does it for me, man. It's like <laughs> you know, looking at the, the leaderboard and watching people compete, um, watching people build teams, right? Yeah. Like, like you're, you know, anybody that wants to, to get going, they say, hey, man, I wouldn't mind getting my insurance license. Yeah. You know, maybe it's part time. You know, yeah. there's no quotas or standards or anything like that. Yeah. It's like it's your business. You're independent. But we right. give you the ability to, to be a good copycat. If you're like, yeah. I don't know what to do. Oh, you'll know. We have it all <laughs> spelled out, yeah. bro. It's very duplicatable, yeah. you know. And, and we've ran the business like that for the last eight years. And uh, that's led us to become the number one. You know, IMO in our space by a long shot. You know, we're, we're number one with Americo, number one at Mutual of Omaha, John Hancock, number one with Aetna, number one with AIG, Prosperity, yeah. number one with Transamerica. Yeah. So we, we've done that by serving people, man, yeah. by giving them the best shot with the highest pay, mm-hmm. no fees, training that's just very duplicatable, very mm-hmm. simplistic that you can follow. And so really it's just up to the work. And so anybody that wants to say, hey, man, I want to get my license. I want to give it a shot. I want to get this thing going. Um, I want to move forward, whether that's mm-hmm. part-time or full-time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to work with Juan and get, yeah. get going on his team. Juan, how do they get in touch with you? How do they do that? Hey, I mean, the best way right now to get a hold of me would be through my Instagram page. I'm very active on there on my uh, direct messages. My Instagram is um, J-A-R-C-H-M-M-A for Juan Archuleta MMA, right? But uh, send me a DM, man. Let's let's get this team built up. Let's get you guys excited, fired up to continue to support your family and yourself and your passion that you have, right? Like, this might end up being your number one passion. This might be something that you lean more towards instead of getting punched in the face or instead of the work in the dead end job that you have right now. Like, let's join this team. Let's fire you guys up. Let's create world caliber championship mindsets that's going to go out there and support you into the figures that you want to make. Like, that's the best thing about this 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 job is whatever you put into it, you're going to get out of it. Like, yep. don't be afraid to go that extra mile. Like, hey, I told you to make 30 calls this week. Well, shit, I, I made 40 just to just in case you know <laughs> like yeah. i was ready to make you know i doubled that like i don't care like i, I want to go the extra mile because i want to be successful and retire at a young age or be part of this as long as the wheels fall off which per, it doesn't look like anytime soon because you guys are have built such a strong foundation that the pyramid's only going to go as high as the foundation is and the foundation here is pff, endless you know yeah well i agree man i think it's going to be uh, a, a blessing watching your team grow and the people that you'll impact as they reach out to you and we get this thing going. Um, mm-hmm. and it's just cool to see the, the caliber of, of, of different people, man, like what you've accomplished. And I know what you'll accomplish here. Um, you know, looking at Sean Merriman, mm-hmm. even Bradley, some of these guys have joined the company and they've built a massive organization. It's not just about what they built, dude. They've got a lot of people on their team yeah. making a ton of money, doing really, really well for their family. And that, that's, that's what it's all about mm-hmm. is to continue to expand in that way. And as we go into this, this economic downturn, that's now kind of, you know, looming and, and pretty apparent that it's here right dude this is the one thing that's recession proof man i got my license in 2008 yeah. and so i got started when that recession was taking place yeah. and um and and i never experienced any kind of rattle or shake from it you right. know i built it was able to go out there and uh, do really well from day one because mm. there are people that are asking for help there are people that are still worried about their family if something happens yeah. and so the recession as people will lose their jobs or get rattled like this is going to be a, an open door for them to go out there and really That's reinvent amazing. themselves and make the money they need to make for their family. So yeah. I appreciate you, bro. Yeah, it's good you. to be thank in business with you, dog. On. Yeah, heck yeah, man. Thanks. It's finally pulling the trigger and ready to go. Let's go, man. Yeah. All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.